Hey everyone, welcome to the Lanterna YouTube channel and welcome to the IB Biology standard level YouTube series. So during the next 15 weeks, I will be posting a video every week and we'll try to cover all of the IB Biology standard level syllabus. When we're doing this, we'll be focusing on the most important concepts that you'll encounter in class and especially the terminology. So we won't be able to go into detail on all of the areas of the syllabus, but we'll be talking about all of the different uh, sections and make sure that you're familiar with the terminology, the most important concepts, so that when you're in class, when you're doing your assignments, obviously when you're studying for your exams or for mock exams, you know what everyone's talking about. You probably know that your IB biology standard level course has a couple of different areas. That is cell biology, for instance, that's also molecular biology, genetics, um, a big chunk is human physiology, so how does the human body work, and um, we have ecology, and finally evolution and biodiversity. So it's a huge range of topics, and I'm going to try to break them down as much as possible. And one thing that I'm going to try to do, and that's very important to note before, we won't be going chapter by chapter or section by section, but I'll try to sort of combine different areas of the syllabus when they make sense. So for instance, when we talk about evolution, it makes sense to talk about genetics as well, because that's sort of what evolution works on, right? But we'll get to that at a later point. Today, we're going to start with a short introduction on the most important terminology. Again, what you need as a basis to understand everything that follows. We'll be looking at the most important molecules in biology, so there will be some chemistry as well. Um, but it's good to get that out of the way at the beginning so that later when you encounter that again, you already know what it is and you won't be freaked out by it. During the next weeks, like I said, we'll be covering all of those topics. Next week, we'll be looking at sort of the bigger picture, evolution, but also cell biology. So again, combining topics that go well together. And then we'll be going through the syllabus bit by bit. I'm very much looking forward to it, and let's get started with today's topic, an intro to biology, general terminology, and the most important molecules that we'll encounter. So something that is very important is to get a sense of the size. So as we zoom in here, you see some stuff like grain of salt, amoeba, and we're at the cell level, so you can already tell how small a cell is. Then as we get smaller, you see chromosome, bacteria, um, and parts that make up the cell, like we just saw mitochondria on there. And then it gets smaller and smaller and smaller. You get to stuff like viruses. And um, now we're finally on the molecular level and we're just zooming in there to the carbon atom. And now you have an idea of what we're talking about in terms of size. So it's very, very small. And obviously there are still, it's not all just small. There are still very large differences then if you look at a cell if you look at um, parts that make up the cell, or if we're looking at the molecular level, so at molecules. Of course, you should have some basic background knowledge already from your previous sort of schooling on what are atoms, what are molecules, they're the units we're looking at. We're not going to go on any smaller level in biology. That would be chemistry, physics, maybe. For us, um, the atom is the smallest level of analysis here. But we'll get to that part later, actually. I want to start with a few very basic terms and some general ideas of what we're studying in biology. So two words that I want to talk about are biotic and abiotic. Biotic means living and abiotic means non-living. It's pretty straightforward. And that already tells you that in biology, we'll be dealing with the study of the living. However, we will also look at abiotic factors. So that would be, for instance, how a living organism a human, a plant, you know, a tree, bacteria, how that interacts with the environment. So an abiotic factor could be the food available to an organism or the weather, that would be climate, etc. But we'll be focusing mostly on the biotic. So what does it mean to be biotic, to be living? There are a couple of functions of life that are very, very central to understand and everything else that we'll be doing in the biology course and that you'll be learning in your IB course is based on these functions of life. They are metabolism. Metabolism means you are taking in nutrition in some way, shape, or form. That can be, if you look at plants, that is the energy from sunlight that is being taken in and then converted into a molecule that can be digested. You also need excretion. 
So some substance is being taken in, nutrition, and something is excreted. If you look at, again, let's take the example of plants, that would be oxygen that is in the process of photosynthesis excreted as a waste product, actually, by the plant. And then we humans, we take that in oxygen for cellular respiration, but we'll get to all of that later. Another function of life is reproduction. If you have a living organism, that means that organism is able to reproduce by itself. That can be sexual reproduction, as seen as most a in most animals, humans for instance, or that can be asexual reproduction, for instance, in bacteria. Then we have another function of life, which is called sensitivity. And sensitivity means that you as an organism are reacting to stimuli. Stimuli can be, you know, touching something that can be um, changing the environment in some way. So reacting to stimuli from the environment. The next function of life is related to that. It's called homeostasis. Homeostasis is a whole chapter that we'll cover later. For now, you need to know you as an organism, you are keeping an internal environment that is stable and different from the outside. So think, for example, of heat. If you go out in the winter and it's very cold outside, your body is going to try to keep the inside warm at a certain temperature. Of course, if you stay out too long, it's not going to work. And at some point, you're going to get very cold. But what your body is doing is reacting to the outside and keeping an internal environment as, at a stable level. It doesn't only go for temperature, it goes for a lot of other things that we'll discover bit by bit. And then finally, another function of life is growth. Any organism grows throughout their lifetime. And once growth is over and all the other functions of life, that organism is dead. And so we'll be looking at a lot of these organisms, living organisms. We'll be looking at bacteria. We'll be looking at the human a lot in human physiology. Plants, of course, that, although that's more of a higher level topic as uh, it goes into the details. So as you can see, there's lots to cover and we'll get there step by step. For now, I want to talk about one more important thing, which is uh, I've been mentioning the term organism a lot and cell. And so I want to speak about both of these terms and everything that sort of comes with it for a bit before also getting to the molecules, which are promised at the beginning of the video. What is an organism? I mean, it easily comes to mind that an organism is something like the human body. A horse is an organism, but also a bacterium, fungus, any sort of plant. And so we need a better definition than just listing examples. We can use what we just learned before. An organism refers to any individual living thing that can react to stimuli. So that would be something that we said before in terms of sensitivity that can reproduce, that can grow, that can maintain homeostasis. So essentially any individual living thing that carries out the functions of life. That's an organism. An organism, however, is made up of smaller units as we zoom in. We can look at organ systems, for instance. So the circulatory system in the human, that is all the veins, all the arteries, all the organs, for example, the heart, obviously, that are responsible for pumping blood around the body. And then we can go a bit deeper. We can look at one of those organs. We can look at the heart, for instance. And then we can look at different tissues because the organ is made up of different sorts of tissues. Uh, for instance, muscle tissue because the heart is just one big muscle, essentially, pumping blood around your body. And then finally, the last unit of analysis is the cell. And so I've mentioned cellular biology. That's what we're going to talk about. Because the cell, and that's very central, is the smallest unit of independent life. You need an organism to carry out all these you know, functions of life together. But on the smallest level, one single cell carries out those functions as well. So when we talk about molecular biology, we can zoom in even more, but we're not going to look at an entire unit carrying out functions of life anymore. We'll be looking at molecular reactions inside of a cell. What's also very important is that all living organisms are composed of cells or products of cells, and that goes under the name of cell theory, all of what I'm just saying, if you encounter that again in class. And the last point, very important, we'll come to that next week, Cells can only arise from pre-existing cells. Now for the final part about molecules, we first of all need to define a few more terms. Again, for the sake of biology, we're going to consider the atom to be the smallest particle of a chemical element that can exist. Of course, atoms are not just found by themselves, but can also be found in so-called compounds. So let's consider this water molecule here. 
When we say it's a compound, we mean that different atoms from different elements come together. So here, for instance, we have one oxygen and two hydrogen atoms. They are bound together, and that is a compound. And so now a molecule is the smallest particle of that compound that still has all of the chemical properties of the compound H2O or water. While water is by far the most common compound found in your body, there are also many others. And so just have a look here at the different elements that you might encounter. So again, an element that would be oxygen, hydrogen, and we can, if we look at them, we can zoom in and the smallest unit that we will consider is the atom. If we bind multiple atoms together, for instance, two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom, H2O, that is then a compound, water, and the smallest unit of that compound will be that combination, H2O, and that is a water molecule.